In this video, I'm going to explain about one Kaggle competition which was concluded a week before. And this competition is about the banking loan prediction. Here for this competition, the dataset provider is American Express. You know, this is one of the popular fintech company in the world. They are giving the data for us to predict the customer credit card due payment. So basically, this problem is a classification problem. I will show you the objective of this competition so you can easily understand the problem. So look at the objective here. If you want to read the objective more precisely, then pause the video here and take time to read the objective completely. So we are having the data of American Express credit card holders. We need to find whether the customer will pay their credit card bill amount or not. So this is the agenda of this competition. And we are having lot of features here. The features are extracted from the customer profiles. By using these features, we have to predict the future of this bill payment problem. And, and this data has the record of 18 months of customer profiles. This is very huge data to process. The data set size is about 16 GB for training data and 33 GB for testing data. It is very huge amount of computation to process. But for processing, we will compress the data into parquet format. So it is more of compressed version of the CSV data. We can write native pandas query to interact with this data set. So that's not a big change of approach. Let's dive into the code. In the first cell, I just imported two libraries that are NumPy and pandas. And then I'm reading the parquet data file using pandas function. So let's read some samples here and we will understand the data a little bit more. So see here, this is our sample data. We have 191 columns. That means except the customer ID and target column, technically we have 189 features. We have to take an account of all the features and do some feature selection in this data set to bring the appropriate results for this competition. That is our main task, okay? So it is simple to hear, but it is actually tough to do the feature engineering process because we have 189 columns to process and identifying the best features for target is quite challenging here. Why I'm saying this means we don't have enough knowledge on this data set. In this objective section, they mentioned some information regarding the variables. It is quite helpful to manage this data, but the problem arises at handling the null values. There are a lot of null values that are spread over all the features in the data set. So most of the variables here are numerical one. We don't know the exact number of the data. Majorly, if you're facing this null value issues in your project, you need to sit down with the domain expert and with the help of the domain knowledge guys, you need to fill up and program those null values into your meaningful ones. So this is the right approach if you are working with unknown domain. But here we don't have the type of resources. We are taking a random plain statistical approach to fill the null values. Understand one thing, if you fill the null values properly, then your result for this competition is definitely turned out to be a good accuracy. Because handling the missing values is one of the major factor in data science problem. And if you did it properly, then you will get the success on any sort of data science problem. So this is one of the key points to remember if you're working with the data science problem. First, let me check the classification of the target values. I already wrote a query here. This will give us the exact percentage of data that are distributed among a target feature column. So let's run this block. So see this pie chart, more of 75% are zero values and 25% of one values. This gives us some meaning towards the data. The meaning here is 75% of customer profiles are paying their credit card bills properly and remaining 25% are not paying their credit card bills within the 120 days of due time. So this is the quick insight about the target column and let's move to the data cleansing part. In the first part of data cleansing, I'm going to set some threshold value for my training data set. So look at the code here. The code explains that we are setting up the threshold value as 80 and we declared that parameter in drop NA function. So how this query exactly works here? The query that we wrote here will check the every data column and if any feature has 80% of null values, then this query will drop that feature from our data set. So this is the concept behind this query and let's execute this query. So see here, a lot of features from the training data got dropped because it contains 80% of null values. If we take the null data, it will create more problem while applying the algorithm. So you should have to do this process to eliminate more nullified features that are present in the data set. So after that, we have to treat the rest of the null values by filling some random values. For filling the null values, I took one important step here that is called as forward fill and backward fill. The forward fill is nothing but it will take the value from the column. And if you are having the missing data in your feature column, it will fill those missing data in an upwards direction. And then the backward fill is like, it will fill the missing value in a downwards direction. And if you include any one of this function, it won't fill all the values. So here I'm just using both filling methods to fill my null values in the data set. After that, I'm setting my customer ID as an index. 
because that is a format of output file that we need to submit for this competition and then i drop the date column here because it is not relevant to the current use case why it is not relevant means we are not going to apply any time series problem approaches here we are just simply applying the classification algorithm and these features are built enough to operate for classification we don't need any time data here the next step of data cleansing process we need to transform the categorical variables into numerical ones and there are two features representing categorical values we need to do one hot encoding approach to convert those values into numerical ones here i did the one hot encoding approach this will help us to convert those categorically into numericals okay that's all about the data cleansing process next we need to do the feature selection part this part is very tricky for me because I'm not expert in financial banking domain and I don't know the weightage of the features that are presented here. So how I'm selecting the features means I just simply trusting the statistics and correlation here to selecting the features. Here I wrote on logic and this code explains like if any features contain more than 0.4 correlation ratio between them then we can use that feature for our classification. Because we are having lot of features to operate and the correlation is and correlation is one of the correct metric to identify the features. So generally if you don't know about the correlation, correlation is like relation between the two features that is the concept of correlation and if you put the correlation condition like this you will get the high correlated features related to the target. After that I am just dropping the less correlated features from my data and then I am storing the feature column in separate variable and target column in separate variable. And the next one is the mutual information classification. So this code here will help us to understand the mutual information gain between all the features that, that we selected. So once I executed this block, you will see here. So look at this, all the features are giving some information related to each other. So with this feature understanding, we will move towards the algorithm section. In the algorithm section, I just wrote the code for XGP classifier. It is one of the go-to technique for classification and it is a boosting algorithm. And if you want to know the concept of boosting, I already made a video about it. Definitely that is a useful content that will help you to understand the background maths and concept behind the boosting. Okay. So looks like our model is trained. So let's check this model against the testing side. So before processing the testing data, you have to know that we did some data cleansing process for training side. And in the training part, we dropped some columns for better accuracy. So in the testing side, you need to you need to include the same process for validation. Otherwise, you will end up with some error. So I wrote the code here. So this code will drop some of the unimportant features from the test columns. And here I pass up the train data columns. So this code will drop the columns which are not present in the train data. So this is the logic I wrote here. After that, I applied forward data filling and backward data filling to avoid the bias over the data. So once the test data is ready, we, we can apply the test data on our model. So once we apply the test data on our model, you will get the results like this. So we don't know how much accurate this prediction data is, but in Kaggle side, they evaluated my model and they gave accuracy like 75%. It is not that much worse actually. We did some good progress on this big data and 75% accuracy is a good thing. We did not explore the data completely here and we don't know the real time relations and concept behind the data and features. I trusted the statistics and Python here to do the data cleansing operation. And if we dig and torture the data more, you will get good accuracy more than this. So that's all about this video and thanks for watching and thank you. See you on next another week.